Congrats. Uh, you lived up to your promise to be the first person to knock out Max Holloway. Um, just how does it feel knowing you know another prediction you forecasted came to life? Uh, I call this because I, I knew it. It's a, it's a surprise for for a lot of people, but for me, it's like I knew it. I said it and I did it. Was there anything about the fight that surprised you at all as it went? I mean, I know you thought he wasn't going to meet you in the middle when you pointed, this but... This is what surprised me, that I pointed the ground and he didn't stop with me in the middle of the octagon and, and he started to some bullshit like this. It was like, you call yourself the bull. When you call me out, you said, I'm the bull, the Matador is running from me. You never see a bull doing this, right? <laughs> so, yeah, that surprised me a little bit. So I had to change the game plan a little bit, but at the end of the day, I get the, the knockout. Is that why you brought the BMF belt today after the fight, because he did not do that? I never understand the fact that why they didn't put the BMF belt on, on the line. It has to be on, on the line since the first day, but they don't want to make it official. I'm, I'm going to make it official by myself. Dana was in here and he did say that uh, Max is still the BMF champion, so... Yeah. It's gonna be a little bit weird from them to promote him as a, as a BMF, but it is what it is, no problem. I'm gonna keep it in, in my house. Uh, the BMF champion has been knocked out in their next fight every time That's they've won right. that. Now, I'm the new, the baddest motherfucker world champion. Uh, Dana, when he was in here as well, he said the rematch with Alexander Volkanovsky is going to be next. He met you in the cage. I know it's a lot of respect between you two. Um, is that the fight you think is the right matchup to make for your next title defense? Yeah, to be honest, at, the, at this point, there's no one else that deserves the shot more than more than Volk, right? He, he's been a great champion. He's a legend in the, in, in the featherweight division, so he deserves the shot without any doubt. So, but. At, at the same time, it's that I'm going to take a, a small break, so we'll see. We'll see how, how, how the things will will going on in, in, in the featherweight division. Maybe he, he accepts a fight with some new contender and it doesn't play out like he, he is planning and I'm going to have to face someone else. I don't know. Would you be okay if Alex fought Diego Lopez for an interim title in February? That's not my business. I don't care. When when I'm, I'm when I'm gonna be ready, I'm just gonna ask the UFC when, where, who is the opponent, and I will be there. And I'm gonna do the same thing as as always. Would your break be longer than February? Because I know you had said on media day before you spoke with us that you would be okay to go into Australia, and then you told us the that is, you're not I'm down for it. I'm 27 years old, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I don't have any. Uh, Brisa, como sería en inglés? Hurry. Hurry? Hurry. Yeah, I don't have any hurry. I'm 27 years old, a world champion. I just defend my belt, so I want I want to go step by step. You know, the the concept I always follow is that the slow is the fastest way to get where you want to be. So I want to choose my, my steps very, very carefully. Uh, one of the judges gave the first round for Max. I'm curious how you feel about that. Uh, I'm never concentrate on, on on the scores. To be honest, I'm always looking for the finish, so I don't care about that. We saw uh, Sergio Ramos enter the octagon. You handed him the belt. Um, what was it like celebrating with him? The celebration is not over. <laughs> the celebration is not we're not over. We're gonna we gonna, we're gonna keep celebrating after after this press conference. Trust me, it's gonna be much better than the one you saw in, inside the octagon. Uh, November 2019, your final fight before you got signed to the UFC, I was there in Bahrain uh, watching you fight. That was your first knockout win. Before that, it was all submissions. And it seems like you've fallen in love with your boxing ever since then, and you've done some incredible things. Was it that moment of tasting the knockout win, or is it something that you decided that you wanted to change in your fighting style? It's something that I, I decided to change in my in, in my fight my fight style because before that I had all submissions, so I I, I was uh, starting to find some problems in, inside the octagon because all my opponents were expecting from me uh, takedowns in, in, in the ground game, so I was like 
I have to I have to be a very complete fighter. I don't have to have any any holes in, in, in any area of the of the game in the striking or in the ground game or in the wrestling. I have to be a very complete fighter. So since that moment when when I felt the knockout, I was like mm, I have the power. So I have to keep working on that and I'm going to be a very very complete fighter and very very hard to beat. Uh, did anything surprise you in terms of his approach, his game plan, his striking, the exchanges that you guys had? Not at all, not at all to be, to be honest. I was, uh, the thing that I was expecting from him that he wouldn't be easy, you know, because he's a great striker. He, he, he proved that many, many times inside the octagon. He's one of the best strikers in the in the featherweight division and in the UFC. Very patient inside the octagon. Mm, very good rounded in, in, in the striking. So uh, I was expecting all the good things from him, but at the same time, I know how I can handle all, all, all that kind of things inside the octagon. In a hypothetical fight against Islam, how do you see that fight going? If it goes to the ground, do you feel confident that you could outgrapple him or would you try to keep it standing? And My mindset is always the same. I, I, I'm always looking to achieve things that no one could. So, he, someone could submit him. I will be the first one to submit him. And any, any specific yeah, submission? Now I, I heard some, some love from some idiots but it's gonna happen. Question to Ilya. First of all, congratulations on, on winning the title. And before the, the title match, there was a couple of weeks ago when uh, you were asked a question about a fight with Mahachev and you said something about, if we have to fight on the street, then I would have to pay his medical bills. The question is, what do you, what do you know about the street? Because you were born in Germany and then you moved to uh, Spain. So what would you know about it? We know you want to answer. We have to check. Can you speak in English, please? Thank you. Cartola, Taichi, the traductor, the Gada Tar. Gada Utar, my family, Cartola, the Gada Utar. Ilya just asked, who bring this guy in this room? I've come by myself. So you, you're gonna have to stand up and leave the room by yourself. So to be honest, uh, I don't really have a question, just a little request. There are too many Georgian journalists and Spanish journalists here. Is it possible somehow to take uh, a photo with all of, of us course, together? Of course, of course. Thank you. Let's go. I'm gonna come down and take a picture. With you and with this guy here.